Um, I have been an artist as long as I can remember. Um, I was actually born in Tacoma Park at the old Washington Sanitarium Hospital. Um, went to school in East Silver Spring at the uh, Highland View Elementary, so I'm about as local as you can get. Um, but I come from a third generation um, photographic family, so making images has been a part of the family business since 1918. Um, I started drawing and realized that I had a talent at a very young age and as most artists are, you're driven to create those images. It's not something you sit down and feel like, well, I have to work at this. You, you just have to work it out of your system. So I've been doing that since I was seven, eight years old. Well, I started out my art career as an illustrator. I illustrated children's books, um, underground comics, uh, ads with the University of Maryland's uh, Diamondback. And then I pretty much left illustration and art for many years because I became a full-time photographer. Um, during those years, I did very little art, just occasionally. But in my, <laughs> in my more adult years, I am now back to creating art with a passion. I'm semi-retired. Um, and now I'm an artist in residence at Montpelier Cultural Arts Center up in Laurel as a printmaker. And these days, I primarily make etchings and linocut cut prints. However, I still do, as we can see upstairs, I still do an occasional pencil drawing. Um, usually, I tend to work more in black and white because of the printmaking aspect of it. But um, I've found my true artistic calling as a printmaker. And I've, I've been on a roll for the past five years. And during the pandemic, I haven't been able to get to the printmaking studios, but I keep creating plates. Etchings are made from either a metal plate, a plastic plate. I keep making those, and now that I'm back in the studio, I'm printing like a madman. Well, because I have spent many years as a photographer, um, my side, I was an architectural and aerial photographer for 30 years as my full-time job. Um, but these days, I'm driven literally. Um, my son is a diner historian, so we make lots of road trips together, or we used to. Um, and I'm always looking at the American roadside as a, a subject matter. And with that, also, I love, strangely enough, I love funerary art that's older, so I tend to do a lot of prints based on funerary statues, crypts, things like that. It's not necessarily that I'm dark and deep. I just like the artistic side of that. Um, and... Yeah, I also do a lot of musicians because that's what I'm doing in my retirement. I design album covers and shoot PR for musicians, so I also do a lot of art featuring musicians. What I would really like to do, because I do all these album covers, I've done over 350 album covers, and only one of those is art. All the rest are photographically based. I come from an era that was the golden age of album design. And I want to get back and do some art on these albums that I'm working on. I don't, I'm not sure why the musicians don't want 
those as their covers, but that's what I'd really liked to be doing more of is creating classic art images for musicians. You should try now. Beer, can, the label for the <laughs> beer cans have great illustrations. It's wonderful art. I would love to do that too. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm not sure I could answer that. I have a good friend who is an art historian and she was Professor Emeritus at the Museum or the uh, School of the Arts in Philadelphia. And she's written a number of art history books. And my favorite one is she tries to explain what is art. And it's called Why is a Painting Like a Pizza? And she does a much better job of explaining it. But I couldn't really tell you what art is. I think it's just the primal urge of people to create things and as far as the art that's here it's two-dimensional images and I think it's just something inside people that you feel the need to create an image that other people can enjoy or provokes thought. I started to uh, create art late in life. Um, I went through my whole life just having a regular job and doing things like that, but I thought you had to be born an artist. You had to have that talent, but, so I didn't pursue it, but I was always around art in my life and I enjoyed it. So when I became about 50 years old, I said, I'm just gonna get some, some canvases and some paint and I'm gonna give it a try. So that's what I've been doing for the last seven, eight years. Well, well painting, it, it's, it's free, so it, when you have free time, your, your imagination is allowed to roam. And when it roams, it roams on the canvas where you can just create anything. And then you can stand back and look at it and say, oh, that's not what I meant to say. Let's try it again, or oh, it is. So it's that, it's that freedom that you have to create that I enjoy. And it, it, it helps me to uh, see things and share and connect with other people. When I do pieces of art that I think are probably just basic. Other people see other things in it and it, it opens a dialogue between the two of us and that creation helps, uh, helps, helps one another, I guess. It helps me to share and for people to connect. I don't have a specific style because, like I said, I started late. So as you can see, my paintings around are very varied, but they are, the color is what, what pops out in them. So that's consistent in all my work. But I like to have a narrative in my story, in my paintings. So when you look at my paintings, there may be some text that suggests something, or it may be a figure. So there's a story behind it that allows me to connect with the viewer and the viewer to connect with the piece. So uh, I don't have a specific style because I'm new and I'm learning all the different styles and techniques to, to see which one uh, I, I come at naturally expressing. Yeah, so right now, like I said, because I'm new at it, I, I do paintings and also do sculptures. And I do 3D sculptures, which allows me to go into a computer and create something and then send it off and have it uh, bronze cast and things like that. So I'd like for my art to elevate to a point where uh, you don't see me as one style of painting. You see my paintings vary uh, from different styles to styles. and uh, and. Uh, I'm also curating shows as well. So I'm bringing other artists in and I like to collaborate with other artists to do pieces and to do shows so that, uh, like I said, when I was younger, I didn't think I was an artist. I thought you had to be born to be an artist. But I learned that art is free, so I like to create things. So some little kid will come in here and he'll see that and he say, oh, it inspires him to, to paint or, or to create or to express himself. So it allows him that freedom that he doesn't have to think that you have to be born to be a painter or be a doctor or all that. You can be all that you want to be. And art helps you to discover that in you. Art, uh, like I said, it's, it's, that, it's that freedom that allows me to connect with others and my pieces to connect and for them to 
connect with my pieces. So it's, it's that freedom that, that art gives you. It, it's, it's free. Everybody can go in a museum or wherever. It, it doesn't cost. You can just go and observe it and learn from it or be inspired by it. And that's the whole thing about art. It, they say art is love. And, you find, and any and everybody can find something in a piece that makes them love it. And that's what it's all about for me. Sarah Hyde is, um, um, is a well-known artist in D.C. in the 70s and the early 80s. She was born in Maryland uh, and raised in Maryland, but painted a lot in D.C. up until 1983. Her inspiration uh, was very much focusing on movement and dance and also individual portraiture. Uh, from 1979 to 1983, she, uh, she showed in a number of places in D.C. and a number of places in Maryland, and she, got, she had great reviews. Uh, the, her work ends in 1983 because she made a decision to get married, have children, and go and get her Ph.D. in art and aesthetics. Her plan, though, was to return to the studio in 1999, which she did. So she was moving into her next phase when she, um, she contracted brain cancer, and she died in 2007. So all of the work that's seen here in Tacoma Park at the center and the work that's all mounted and stored at, you know, in her studio is um, from 1979 to 1983, there's about a hundred pieces altogether. Uh, her inspiration uh, was always personal with art. Um, she painted and produced from her feeling, and um, she painted and produced from primarily her connection with other women friends who served as her um, served as her models. Sarah as an artist was very interesting. The, you do see unbelievable energy in the work that she produces. Um, even, with a, even with portraitures where you have a model who's stationary, there's just an intensity um, in the person of the, of, of the model that she's, um, that she's replicating on canvas. That energy, you know, it's interesting. She was a, she's a quiet person. Um, and you would not, if you had met her, you would not have, you would not have necessarily connected the person you're talking to to some of the energy that you see in some of these large paintings, which are so outward and effusive. So one thing that she did for those years was she went to different dance studios in D.C., the Joy of Motion in particular, um, down on DuPont Circle, and she would sit there for hours and use the movement and the dancers who were um, there in the studio as her models. Uh, so a lot of this was produced on, on site at, at um, Joy of Motion. Um, and she had remained in touch with the dance community throughout her artistic you know, career. So her life was cut short. I mean, her career as an artist had gone through a series of phases. And, you know, she was about to, at age 52, she was about to embark on, you know, the next phase. She was going to be integrating all of the stuff that we see here into a new phase of art, which probably would have included sculpture. Um, she was, the brain cancer um, kept her alive, but made her, uh, disabled her cognitively. So she was really, truly disabled for seven to eight years and unable to sort of take charge of her a legacy. I had to do that. And this is what I'm doing. I'm making sure that her memory um, kind of stays alive through her artwork. Mm -hmm.